And uh, speaking of the devil, there he is, uh, Tim Twentyman, uh, DetroitLions.com, senior writer and insider. Uh, Tim, how you doing today? A lot of excitement in the building, I'm sure, today, huh? Yeah, there's quite a bit going on. You know, Brad had his presser today. Some, somebody told yeah, me some uniforms are pulled out or something to do. So, yeah, it's busy around here. Oh, my gosh. I got to tell you, you, you know. I'm surprised he doesn't have his New Jersey on. Right? Right. I recognize those digs, by Tim, the way. If, I don't know what you can and cannot say about this being in the building, but what is the mood in the building when you have this big event tonight and then all of a sudden uh, you have this leak? And I, I do feel bad for the organization when you put so much work into something and then that gets leaked out there. Well, I, I thought our social media department handled it great. You know, they had fun did. with it. Um, they had some videos, obviously, you know, prepared in case. Because I think this happens a lot when teams do these kind of reveals with the uniforms and stuff. So, look, they were prepared. They had some fun with it. Um, I think it was kind of inevitable. Um, I think that at least – history of the league doing these and teams doing these i think they they usually leak and come out so um but no it was it was kind of i'm glad they had fun with it had a couple videos prepped and it'll still be a great event tonight and fans will still enjoy it tim been a long time how you been man good man how you doing bro i can't complain man i'm good i'm excited even with the leak the jerseys look amazing i especially love the blue uh the gray i i I really glad that they went back kind of to that 93 vibe back with barry sanders and chris spillman as you see, Elaine McNeil wearing that 54. Uh, a week from today, it's all it, it all starts here in Detroit. What is your what is your feel about the 29th pick? We were sitting here talking at you know at nauseum over what are they going to do? Did they trade up? Did they trade back? Did they try to get picks? Did they try to go go snag a Jared verse? Uh, what did they do? I think everybody's trying to ask that question. You would know a little bit more than everybody else. Well, I think they've got options, and I think that's the great thing. And, you know, drafting at, at 29 is a little different for, for Brad. You know, he's had a top 10 pick each of the last three. He's had two picks in the first round um, the last two years. And I think at 29, what he can do is just let the draft come to him. I, I think the roster is at, a, is at its best point in his tenure heading into the draft. And so um, you can sit back, see how this plays out, um, and, and kind of just let the draft come to you and trust your board. That's one thing Brad is always going to do is, is, is he's going to trust his board and he's going to take the best player available. He's not going to reach for a need. He's not going to reach for a position and pass up a better football player um, to fill a position. That's not how he approaches the draft. So he's just going to trust his board. And I think if I was to make a prediction, I, I would not be surprised at all if it ends up at the end of the first round, there being a group of maybe 10 players that he has graded pretty equally and he moves out of the first round and gains another asset. Um, I think that would be probably the, the most likely scenario in my world. And if he picks, it's just going to be the best player available. And, you know, maybe a name that that might be there um, is a guy like Graham Barton from Duke, you know, a really versatile offensive lineman that can play all, all five spots. You know, this is a really good offensive line group of uh, a, a class and a really, really good wide receiver class. And I would not be surprised if one of those guys um, at 29 is the best player on, uh, you know, Brad Holmes's board and um, a guy like, you know, like uh, uh, Graham Barton kind of just fits everything that, that Detroit's about, in my opinion. Heard that mess. I did. T- Tim, <laughs> I, I did. Tim, I opened up my big mouth about a month ago. And I said, there is no way that that um, Brad Holmes is going to leave the fans of Detroit hanging. I would quit this job if Brad Holmes trades out of the first round. And I'll tell you what, the more you look at this thing, the more you see these players all grouped together, the more it does seem likely that they would trade back instead of picking at 29. I do feel now that that, that is almost uh, a better than 50% possibility. Well, I think when you look at last year's draft, too, I mean, look at the talent and the production that they got in the second round. I mean, you got a guy like Brian Branch. You got a guy like Sam Laporte. I mean, those are two guys that came in and really helped you out. And so there's still a lot of quality players there in the second round. If you can add another one or add a third rounder um, and you only move back a few spots and you still have a similar grade on all these bunch of players, I just think that's the smartest move. I get it. It's in Detroit. I know the fans will be disappointed, but something tells me they'll have a few pops in their system, um, you know, 
before that, and, and they'll get over it. Brad Holmes even apologized today if that indeed does happen. Uh, I think it's a possibility. I, I just think – I think anything can happen because Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell have done such a good job of setting themselves up where they can just let this play out and trust their board. And that's a great spot to be in if you're the Detroit Lions. Hey, Tim, let me ask you a quick question. We make so much of if they're going to move up, if they're going to move back. Uh, do we know who the Lions may have in their scoop? Is there a couple of players that you may have heard about the Lions liking, be it workouts, be it film, be it uh, a senior bowl or something like that? Are there a couple of players around that pick that you know for a fact the Lions having their gaze. Well, I can tell you this. They've done a lot of homework on the cornerback class. Okay. Um, they've had Appreciate a bunch that. of guys in for the – yeah, they've had a bunch of guys in um, on their, you know, uh, allotted 30 uh, pre-draft visits. Uh, I know they met with a lot of guys, um, a lot of cornerbacks at um, at, at the, uh, the combine. And so, you know, I think if you're talking about a position group to move up, Braylon, I, you know, I, I think there's, you know, four or five cornerbacks in this class – um, and then there's, I think, a significant drop off, uh, uh, you know, to the next group. Gotcha. And so I think maybe potentially um, if you're talking about them moving up, if, if they really do like a, a Kool-Aid McKinstry who, they, who you know, they had in for a visit uh, reportedly, um, you know, that to me is, is maybe a position group you could see them move up for. I know they've done a lot of homework on the cornerbacks. Hey, Tim, I also wanted to ask you, obviously, about uh, offensive line. Look, it's the identity of this team. You mentioned the Duke offensive lineman as well. Um, Taylor Decker is, you know, old, an older player, uh, still very productive, one of the best still at left tackle, but he is getting up there in age. Had surgery. Frank had surgery this offseason. Yeah. Frank Rag now. Um, I didn't realize until after the season and we had some of those exit interviews that there was a consideration then maybe Big Frank would hang him up. Uh, so even even though that decision wasn't made this year, is it next year? Is it two years down the line? Um, this team does need offensive line help, does it not? Yeah, you know, I also add Kevin Zeitler to that list. I mean, he signed just a one-year deal. So, um, you know, that's another thing that, that – isn't settled long term, and so look, that's been the identity, like you mentioned, of this football team. It, it, it doesn't matter what your quarterback's like, the weapons you have on the outside. If you can't protect, you're not going to win football games. Just ask Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl a few years ago when you know he was onslaughted by you know um, not having adequate protection. Um, and so look, this, this team wants to run the football, protect Jared Goff, and and that's been the recipe for su success. Um, I think they could go tackle in this uh, draft. I certainly think one of the um, you know top interior offensive linemen there at the end of round one certainly makes sense. I think there's some guys in this draft when talking about Barton in particular, you know, he played center at Duke and then he played left tackle. I think he could legitimately play five positions um, in the league. I think he's an interior guy, probably more center guard, but you know, with the numbers, um, you know, roster numbers on game day, you can only have 46. You've got to make some tough decisions there. You have some injuries, the benefit of a guy being able to, you know, move out to tackle and hold his own. I just think that fits what this football team is all about building in the trenches, having versatility up front. Um, and, and, and so, so, you know, they'll continue to add offensive linemen um, and they'll continue to draft them um, because they know that that's the, the, the core of this football team. That's what they want to be about is having a really good, strong, physical offensive uh, line that could run the football and protect the quarterback. Hey, Tim, let me ask you about the wide receiver position uh, near and dear to Braylon's heart. Obviously, <laughs> we talk about it a lot. We talked about Jamison Williams and basically had a rookie season. What they're going to do with him, but not signing Josh Reynolds. Uh, you re-signed uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones. Do you see at 29 or maybe even before that, maybe they move up, uh, do you see a wide receiver coming over in the draft uh, that early? Or do they wait? Do they still sign somebody? What's your take on the wide receivers? Well, I think when you look at this wide receiver class as a whole, it might be one of the best classes in, in a decade. Um, not only top end talent, you know, with obviously the Marvin Harrison juniors and, um, you know, Odunze's and, and some of the other guys that are expected to be top 10 picks, but it's deep. I think you're going to get, um, a, 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 you know, a guy that can come in and contribute well into, uh, you know, late into, into day two. I think it's that deep of a class. So, wow. you know, I think certainly there's a chance that, you know, a wide receiver, 
receivers is, you know, on the top of that draft board, you know, maybe a guy like, um, you know, a Don Mitchell um, from uh, Texas, really talented guy, Xavier Worthy, obviously, um, you know, after what he did at the combine. Um, but I think, you know, if you really fall in love with one, you can take one. And uh, to your point, Detroit does need one. Um, yeah. You know, Khalif Raymond is in that mix too. I think he's a guy that, uh, you know, a lot of people forget about, but they could certainly use a guy on the outside with size. I think that was what kind of Josh, you know, gave them, and, you know, receiver with size, made tough catches over the middle. You know, I think if they can get one of those guys, add some, add some height, some size, some length, some catch radius to that room. Uh, I think that's something that they'll likely come away with in this draft, but it's such a deep class that I think, if you love a guy at 29, great. But I think you can find a guy on day two that's going to come in and be a number two, number three type guy, be very serviceable. And so I think you've got options at, at receiver. And you know, I can't let you go without asking about my favorite position. Kicker. The, the kicker. <laughs> okay. Uh, I know they've got Michael Badgley. They re signed him. He's going to compete. He's going to lose, but he's going to compete. Are they going to sign somebody like a Jake Bates? Are they going to, is there a kicker out there that they'd get? That they could draft, and where would they roll is that the, the dice? The UFL with that? guy, yeah, the Jake Bates is the UFL Michigan Panthers kicker. See if Jake Bates can consistently kick him, you know, inside forty-eight yards. You know, I know the sixty-two and sixty-four get the headlines, but to be a kicker in the NFL, you like you make your money yeah. on making sure you hit all those from forty-five and in. So let's see a few more of those before we yeah. go that route. But you know, it's funny, actually. I I, I put out an article this morning: um, five kickers who could interest the Lions. It's on DetroitLions.com right now. So I go through, you know, a bunch of kickers. It's it's a pretty good class of kickers. Um, there's some experienced guys, some big legs. Look, Brad Holmes has had two kickers in training camp every single year he's been here. I would expect them to, to bring in another guy. I don't think this is, you know, a draft where you're picking one in the third, fourth round. But I think, look, you've got two six-round picks, right? I yeah. think, you know, taking a flyer um, on a kicker, um, you know, late in the sixth round, in the seventh round, even an undrafted, you know, free agent, I, I they're going to – add another kicker um, to this roster, just whether that's a veteran or a rookie, we'll have to wait and see, but they could certainly find one. There's some good ones in this draft if they want one. Hey, Tim, before uh, I, this is my last question for you. I know the free agent period, <laughs> the big part of it is over. It's still continuing. Do you see the Lions picking up another free agent and what's your take on who they got so far? Yeah, you know, I, I, I love what they did on the defensive side of the ball. My, you know, the, especially DJ Reader. You know, I think when you look at DJ Reader and you look at Lee McNeil, now you've got two guys that were both ranked in the top 10 by pro football focus in terms of run defense. I mean, you're, you're building a wall um, on the interior of that that uh, defensive line. I, I think he was an exceptional addition, and I think he makes everybody up front um, you know, a whole lot better. You know, I think maybe one position that people haven't talked about a lot um, that they're still a little thin at is safety. You know, obviously you, you love Kirby Joseph, what he's done the last two years, how Afatu Melifanu, you know, came on strong at the end of the year. But after that, you maybe have one, Brandon Joseph, I think, is, is the other, you know, true safety. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know they, you know, cross-train Brian Branch um, to play some safety. <clears throat> Excuse me. They, uh, you know, they kind of slowed that down a little bit last year just to let him focus on the nickel. I think in his second year, they'll do that again. But look, we, we all watched the games last year. He's he's best in the nickel. And so, you know, I would not be surprised guys, if, if there's a veteran ad at safety, just to help improve those numbers a little bit, something happens to Kirby, something yeah. happens to a Fatu Melifanu. You don't have a lot of experience there behind them. How about Tracy Walker? Well, that's what was I was just going to ask you. You posted uh, on Instagram and I'm back at Detroit Metro airport. What do you make of Tracy Walker? <laughs> Yeah, you know, a guy that obviously they're familiar with, a team guy. Um, you know, obviously things didn't go the way he wanted to last year, but but he was a man about it. He was still great in that locker room. Um, you know, provide something on special teams. You know, I I, I think that certainly could be an, an an option, but I think they'll they'll explore outside of that. I think as well too, and and I wouldn't be surprised if they come away with a safety in this draft too. Tim, last thing, uh, extensions. Uh, Jared Goff, Amon Ross, St. Brown. Should we expect? those anytime soon is there any doubt the Lions get something done with both players uh, in a relatively short period of time 
Um, you know, I don't know about the timing. You know, I think when you start looking at deals with that kind of money, that kind of year, um, that kind of language, I think it gets a little bit complicated. Um, but I would certainly expect both those guys to be signed by the start of the season. I'd be surprised if they wouldn't, you know, and you know, something in the summer, maybe it makes sense. We've seen some of those deals um, before with, with Brad and guys come kind of right around training camp and, and right when they're getting back. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised by that. I wouldn't be surprised if something happens next week. I think, you know, they've been in conversations with both um, Jared Goff's agents and Amon Ross St. Brown's agents. I think they're hashing those out. I think, all sides are, are, are in agreement in terms of they want to be back. It's just finalizing numbers and some of that's complicated, but I would expect both those guys to get done um, at least by the end of the summer. Tim, can't thank you enough for your time. I uh, really appreciate, appreciate it. Uh, love your stuff on DetroitLions.com and uh, great content on there. Will Reichard, by the way, is the guy that I would go for, Alabama kicker, uh, part of uh, Tim's column there as well. Thanks, Tim. We appreciate it. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate you, Tim.